To get rid of an abusive and dishonest husband, his wife and his mistress work together to kill him. But the dead body of the husband disappears. Behind this bizarre murder case, there seem to be unspeakable secrets. Hi guys, today Detective Jojo is going to tell you about a thriller suspense film called Diabolique. Our main character named Mia is a teacher at a school for boys. Mia is married to Guy, who is the headmaster of the school. The school was originally an inherited property of Mia. She gave it to her husband Guy as a dowry when she got married. Soon after they got married, Guy showed his true nature. He is violent and often beats Mia. Moreover, he cheats on Mia and has an affair with another teacher named Nicole at the school. However, Mia doesn't hate her husband's mistress Nicole because Nicole, like Mia, often gets beaten up by Guy. Perhaps out of sympathy for each other, Nicole and Mia become very good friends. One night, Mia has a heart attack and faints while preparing to take a bath. This scene is seen by a young boy living in the opposite building. The boy rushes over to save her, and bumps into Nicole halfway. After understanding the situation, Nicole rushes to Mia's room with the boy. They open the bathroom door and see Guy standing beside his wife with a cold face, not doing anything to save his wife. Nicole urges Guy to find medicine for Mia. Guy reluctantly gets the medicine. Luckily, after taking medicine, Mia quickly regains consciousness. After Mia wakes up, Nicole is severely beaten by Guy for being nosy. Nicole finally can't take it anymore, so she tries to persuade Mia to kill Guy with her. At first, a cowardly Mia is hesitant. But what happens at dinner makes up her mind to kill her husband. It turns out that since Guy became principal, he stopped paying for the school's normal costs. As a result, no one cleaned the pool, which used to be clean and now smelled bad. The food tastes terrible and none of the students likes to eat it. Mia, who is concerned about the children, suggests to Guy that he can improve the food for the students. This suggestion offends Guy, so he not only forces Mia to eat a whole plate of disgusting food, but also humiliates her in front of the entire school. Mia is finally determined to kill her husband. The following two days are weekends. Mia and Nicole officially launch their murder plan. Early Saturday morning, they drive to Nicole's old house. They plan to kill Guy here, transport his body back to the school, and throw it into the dirty swimming pool, making it look like Guy falls into the water while drunk and drowns. After arriving at Nicole's old house, they greet the neighbors and say they will spend the weekend here as a way to make up an alibi. Then, Nicole adds an overdose of sleeping pills to a bottle of wine. Mia calls Guy and tells him that she is at Nicole's house and wants Guy to come over so they can talk about the divorce. To let Guy come here as soon as possible, Mia threatens him that she wants a divorce and takes back the school right away. Mia deliberately provokes Guy to come over immediately. Guy falls into the trap, and says he will come right away. Nicole deliberately runs over to her neighbor's house to chat with them so that her neighbors won't find out that Guy has come to her house. Mia's job is to get Guy to drink the alcohol mixed with sleeping pills. Soon, Guy arrives at Nicole's home. He warns Mia that there is no way he would agree to a divorce or return the school to her. During the conversation, Guy sees the bottle of wine on the table. He loves wine, so he pours a glass of wine and starts drinking. After drinking, Guy punches and kicks Mia as usual, and the sound reaches the neighbor's house next door. Nicole quickly turns up the volume on the neighbor's TV so that the neighbors don't hear the noise at Nicole's home. Guy soon passes out from the effects of the drug. Then Nicole comes home. She and Mia put Guy in the water-filled bathtub to drown him. Unexpectedly, Guy suddenly awakes and begins to struggle. Nicole and Mia desperately press him into the water until Guy stops moving. Then, they keep Guy under the water with a heavy bucket of water. After a long night, Guy's eyes are white, and he seems to be dead. Nicole and Mia wrap the body with a shower curtain and put the body in a big suitcase. Since the suitcase is too heavy, the kind neighbor helps them carry the suitcase to the car. After that, Mia and Nicole find Guy's car parked nearby. Mia then drives her car back to school with the suitcase while Nicole drives Guy's car. At night, they throw Guy's body into the dirty pool. Then, they plan to wait until the body comes to the surface and is found. Then, they will tell the police that Guy has fallen into the pool while drunk, and Nicole's neighbors can prove they are not at school as an alibi. They think their plan is perfect. However, two days pass and Guy's body does not surface. 
The teachers and students, who have not seen the principal for two days, begin to talk about Guy's whereabouts. Mia starts to panic and is distracted in class. A few days later, a student accidentally kicks the ball into the pool while playing soccer. To get the dead body found by others as soon as possible, Nicole takes this opportunity to ask the students to go to the tool room to get a net to retrieve the ball. When she throws the tool room's key to the student, she deliberately throws the key into the pool, so that she can empty the entire pool on the pretext of looking for the key. However, when the pool is drained of sewage, there is nothing inside except fallen leaves, which means that Guy's body mysteriously disappears. Mia, who has heart disease, faints after seeing this. Nicole sends her back to her bedroom. When Mia wakes up, she finds a clean suit hanging behind the door. This is the same suit Guy wore the night he was killed. Mia is shocked. She suspects that Guy is not dead and Guy may have started to seek revenge on her and Nicole. Nicole remains calm. She tells Mia not to overthink things. Nicole then carefully looks over Guy's suit and retrieves a box of film from his jacket pocket. They go to a photo studio to develop the film. When they see the results, they break out in a cold sweat. The pictures turn out to show them carrying the dead body. Nicole thinks someone must have seen Guy being killed and taken pictures to blackmail her and Mia. Nicole tells Mia to wait for the blackmailer to show up and then see what they can do. But Mia doesn't have any money to pay the blackmailer. She suggests that they should go to the police station and turn themselves in. Nicole takes out $50,000 in cash when she sees Mia is frightened. She tells Mia that this money is the school's public funds that Guy has stolen. Guy planned to share the money with Nicole. But a few days ago, Guy made up a story that the money had been stolen to keep it all for himself. Nicole found the money in Guy's car after he died, and now they can use it to pay the blackmailer. Nicole's words help Mia calm down. The next day, Mia reads the newspaper that police found a drowned man's body in the river, and from the physical description, it looks very much like Guy. Nicole tells Mia not to do anything hasty so she won't make the police suspicious. But Mia, who is panicked, insists on going to the police station to identify the body. She finds out that the deceased is not Guy. Even though Mia's behavior doesn't make the police suspicious, but attracts the attention of a private investigator named Shirley. Shirley finds Mia, saying she can help Mia find her husband. Mia decides to hire Shirley and let Shirley help to find where Guy's body is. Mia introduces Shirley to Nicole, saying Nicole can help them find Guy's body and this will be done privately so the police won't know about it. But for some reason, Nicole feels uneasy about Shirley's involvement in the case. In the afternoon, a girl comes to the school, looking for Guy. She says she is pregnant with Guy's child and wants to ask Guy for an abortion fee. As Guy is nowhere to be found, the girl finally approaches Guy's wife, Mia. Nicole is very angry when she hears this. Nicole doesn't expect Guy has other lovers besides Mia and Nicole. Nicole gives a check to the girl. Before the girl leaves, Nicole asks her when she has last seen Guy. The girl says it was on Sunday afternoon. Mia is shocked to hear this because she and Nicole killed Guy last Saturday. How come the girl saw Guy last Sunday? Did the girl see Guy's ghost? Mia is so scared that she has another heart attack, so she runs to the bathroom to get the medicine. To her horror, she sees the same shower curtain hanging in the bathroom window that she and Nicole have used to wrap Guy's body. But on the night of the murder, after they dumped the body, Nicole hid the shower curtain in the suitcase in the school basement. Why does the curtain show up in Mia's bathroom? The more Mia thinks about it, the scarier it makes her, but it's not over yet. One afternoon, the school gathered in the courtyard to film the graduation video. The videographer sees a strange figure standing in one of the building's windows. Mia and Nicole then watch the video again. They think the figure looks like Guy. Mia has been terrified by the strange events that have occurred over the past few days. She thinks Guy's ghost is roaming this school and looking for a chance to take her and Nicole's lives. To make up for her sins, Mia goes to a local priest, and tells him about what she has done. The priest asks Mia to put water in the pool, saying the holy water will wash away her sins. Nicole thinks that if this keeps going on, Mia may go crazy, so Nicole decides to leave school with Mia. But when Nicole goes to the office to get the money, she finds that the 50,000 cash that was in the drawer has gone. Only she and Mia know about the money. 
Nicole thinks that the stupid and superstitious Mia must have given the money to a priest to seek God's protection. Nicole then finds Mia and confronts her. Mia admits that she stole the money. Mia says she has given the money to someone who cares about her. Then, she gets into a big fight with Nicole and tells Nicole to get out of the school and stay away from her. Nicole becomes furious that she leaves the school right away. She stops her car halfway to the side of the road to smoke a cigarette. When she is looking for a lighter, she surprisingly finds the 50,000 cash in her bag. She realizes she has misunderstood Mia because Mia didn't give the money to the priest. Instead, Mia has left the money for Nicole. It seems that what Mia meant by the person who really cares about herself is Nicole. Mia got into a big fight with Nicole and told her to leave because Mia wanted to face Guy's ghost by herself. Knowing the truth, Nicole feels guilty, and she hurriedly drives back to the school. Meanwhile, Shirley arrives at the school. She finds a lot of clues recently. First, Guy had driven to Nicole's old house on the day he disappeared. Second, Guy's cufflink was found in the bathtub of Nicole's old house. Third, Nicole's neighbors said that Nicole and Mia left on Sunday with a big, heavy suitcase. Based on the above clues, the experienced Shirley has figured out that Mia and Nicole work together to kill Guy. However, Shirley is still confused about where Guy's body is. To find the answer, she comes to the school to investigate. Just as she enters the school, Shirley hears strange noises coming from the basement. She follows the sound to the basement, where she finds the suitcase Mia and Nicole used to put Guy's body in. Shirley finds a hose inside the suitcase. Shirley finally figures out why Guy's body has disappeared. Just as she is about to go to Mia, she is attacked and knocked unconscious. A man then runs out of the basement. Meanwhile, Mia is in the bathroom, preparing to run the water for a bath. Suddenly she hears a noise coming from downstairs and goes downstairs to check. She finds that the recorder is playing the conversation she and Nicole had about killing Guy. A terrified Mia scurries out of the room in a hurry. When she returns to the bathroom, an even more horrifying scene emerges. She sees Guy slowly rise from the bathtub filled with water. His eyes are white, and he moves stiffly like a zombie. Terrified, Mia loses consciousness and collapses, apparently suffering a heart attack. Then Guy calmly removes the white film in both eyes, revealing a conspiratorial smile. At this moment, Nicole arrives here. However, Nicole is not surprised after seeing Guy. It turns out that everything is a trap set by Nicole and Guy on Mia. Guy had been breathing through that hose while he was in the bathtub and the pool. When Mia and Guy left, he got out of the pool and hid in the school's basement. Then he set up a series of supernatural things to scare Mia, like the suit hanging behind the door and the curtain hanging from the window. Guy knew Mia had heart disease, so he and Nicole planned the whole thing to scare Mia to death. If Mia died, Guy and Nicole could dominate the school property, and Nicole could marry him. But when the girl who wanted the abortion fee showed up, Nicole realized Guy was a playboy and wouldn't marry her. When she found the $50,000 in her bag, she was moved by Mia's kindness and sincerity. She changed her mind and was ready to tell Mia the truth. But when she arrived, it was too late. Nicole feels bad when she looks at Mia, lying still on the ground. Mia slowly opens her eyes. She is still alive. Guy wants to kill Mia as Nicole begs Guy to let Mia go. Mia takes the opportunity to run downstairs. Annoyed, Guy punches Nicole and then chases after Mia and catches her near the pool. He tries to drown Mia by pressing her head into the water. Nicole arrives at the scene. She picks up a rake and knocks Guy off the pool. Guy drags Nicole into the pool, wants to kill Nicole first and then Mia. Mia enters the pool to save Nicole, and together, both women successfully drown Guy. When they get out of the pool, Shirley is waiting for them. She saw them drowning Guy. She punches Mia in the face hard. Mia and Nicole are very confused. Shirley is willing to cover for the women, so she tells Mia that the injury on her face will help to prove that she killed Guy in self-defense. In the last scene, Shirley lights up a cigarette and watches Guy's body sink to the bottom of the pool. Thanks for watching. Detective Jojo will bring up more stories next time.